Family, uh, we are at the facade, the entrance of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, Jerusalem. This is the January the first, uh, January first, 2018. Then this is the facade, and most of it is from the 12th century. Remember that they said that that church been destroyed so many times. Now I wanted to. We talked about the problematic that so many Christian orders are using the same thing. Together. Then let's look. Let's look at the second story. You can see two windows and a ladder. You can see it? Let me just show it to you here. It, the inner part belongs to the Armenian. We cannot go there, but we can see it from here. They wanted to clean the window on the other side. Then they took the ladder and started to clean the window. The Greek Orthodox came to them and said, Who told you that the outside side belongs to you? Because the outside side belongs to everyone. Until they figure out who owns the outside side, no one will maintain the, out, the facade of the church and the ladder will be there. Later on, when we go to it, I will show you a picture painting actually from 1882. The ladder was there too. Wow. And who opens the door and closes the door? We know already. Muslims' families, because no Christian order trusts the other. And now when we know it, it started to rain. Let's go into the church and let's travel at the church itself. Meeting place will be next to the uh, uh, exit. Don't go out if it's rainy. Be there, be next to the exit. There's only one. We are at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. We are climbing up to the Golgotha. Hey, family, say hi. <laughs> And um, Dogata, Calvary, the crucifixion place, that's where Jesus was crucified. Are you staying here? All right, let me stay here. Family, I'm right. No, no. You can sit if you want. Of course you can sit if you want. Then let's start with that. That, that church has been burned down at uh, 1808. Then everything that you see above you is new. There are two chapels here. We are in the Catholic chapel. The left part is a Greek Orthodox chapel. It's strange, isn't it? Protestant. Can you say Greek Orthodox? It's a Protestant. Um, there are a few things that you can see here. First of all, let's talk about me. Can you recognize that scene? Mount Moriah. Abraham, my father, trying to kill me. But the only difference between then and now is look how thin I used to be. <laughs> there. Outside the door, there's another station of the Via Dolorosa. That's where uh, they strip him of his clothes. We cannot go there, mainly because it's very slippery, and people fell, and there's uh, no rail handle, then they close it. But it's right there. Straight ahead, you can see Mary, the mother, standing on top of. Uh, Jesus, after he was nailed into the cross. I don't know if you can understand what's happened here. The mother is seeing his son uh, dying in front of her eyes. I mean, this is horrible. Mary Magdalene is beneath her. And how can you recognize Mary Magdalene? She is the only woman with the hair outside. The rest of the women at that time was covered. Then Mary, the mother, and Mary, mother, anointing the body of Jesus with a bone hair, remember, special, with a very expensive perfume, and you know that it was a vivid with a bottle made of glass. Right there, still in the Catholic area, you can see the statue of Mary. Can you see it? All right. Um, when we get closer, you will see that uh, the statue of Mary is with a spear in her heart. This is another station of the Via Dolorosa that marks the Pietà. 
Mary holding a dead somebody. A dead somebody, which is so sad. Then um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that he's not going to do that. I was afraid, you know. Not that I'm blaming them. The Russian, they are coming to you for one day and they actually they are not even stopping with uh, Then they, they need to rush. The, that area is a Catholic area. Now, I told you that everything that you see here is totally new. Except for one thing. Look at that big mosaic. Jesus asked the God of the universe, that's it? I'm putting on it through the camera. This is the only mosaic wall, or the only mosaic at all, that never been uh, damaged at that fire. But this is 12th century mosaic. And of whom? Jesus as God of the world, or the God of the universe. What you cannot see now is that beneath them, nailing to the cross station, there is a golden table. And that golden table is a um, present from the Medici family. Um, now, that part belongs to the Catholic world. The Greek Orthodox, although they can do whatever they want, they cannot control it and they cannot tell you what to do. But at the Greek Orthodox part, which is right there, oh, they are controlling it. It's already happened that they beat me. Because no one can go with short trousers into the church while I respect it. But some of my family members didn't respect it. And because they saw the sticker and they saw me, they kicked them out and beat them. Then I'm a bit of a tour guide that was abused. Come as close as you can to here. And you can see the crucifixion area. Again, if you come here, you will see better. Can you see the crucifixion area? It's been renovated a week ago. It been to renovate a week ago. Here, a week ago, you couldn't see it. Then, what we can see there? First of all, you can see the crucifixion spot. You can see the icon of Jesus. Above him, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Remember the sin list of Jesus. To the right of Jesus, you can see John the disciple. To the left of Jesus, you, can, you will be able to see Mary, the mother. While Jesus was on the cross, he is on the cross now, remember? He asked John to take care of his mother. Without that, she might die. And then in that matter, some, I don't know if you've been in Ephesus, Turkey, but they will show you another tomb of, of Mary, the house of Mary, because John, because John later on moved to Ephesus. And if he, were, if he was he took care of his mother, maybe he took care with her, or maybe she died before. Because later on, I will talk. I will talk about another story of Mary, and um, according to that story, she died here in Jerusalem. Then, now, what I wanted to do: go slowly, slowly behind them to the crucifixion spot. There's a table there. Beneath the table, there's a hole. What I want you to do is to reach your hand and touch that hole. You will you will put your hand in the hole, you will touch a Calvary in Golgotha. This is the only option for us to do that. And now we can see that table. <laughs> to the right of the table and to the left of the table, you will see the Golgotha stone, the bedrock. Uh, we saw it downstairs. It's covered with the glass mainly because people want to take some souvenirs. And we, then you know what will happen if they will do that. Again, uh, we are just above. Jesus' uh, mosaic wall from 12th century. Now, the way out is from the other side. Don't, uh, let's see. Well, if the priest is there, because uh, it's not a big light, I mean, you might let me take pictures. If not, don't worry. We will take pictures of that on the little place. Right, and now, we do have a video of it. I will wait for you at the other side, all right? We are at the other Church side. of the Holy Sepulchre. We just came out of the Calvary, the Golgotha. We blessed ourselves there at the crucifixion site. And what you're going to see here is uh, uh, candles with a 
um, fire, the holy fire. Once a year, according to the Provoslavs and the Armenian and the Greek Orthodox, holy fire went down from sky by Jesus, and the fire that you saw at the tomb, this is the most important one. And Easter time, I'm sure that you know it, um, this is, the, I think, the, one of the few light, uh, candles that you can go with it into the airplane and go from there to uh, Constantine and Athens and the rest of the province of uh, Moscow and Ukraine and everyone is lighting the candles from that. Then, you do have a candle here, let me just show it to the camera. That candle is actually a branch of candles of 33 candles each to one here of Jesus, and now I won't say what he told me not to say. Yeah, and what we're gonna do, let's turn it into a relic. Now it's just candles. What I wanted to do is to light it from the fire of the, uh, of the holy fire, light all the candles. And now everyone say the pray, ask for something, let it burn a little bit, and because we cannot go with it into the airplane, then there's water there, you know what you can have to do with it. All right, into the water, that's it. Now it's a relic. Now if someone feels bad, can always ask from her, that candle, and then put it on your body, you will feel much better, of course, if you are a believer. Another thing that we can see there, and let's see, see if the priest can let me do that. All right, let's go there quick, please. In June 1831, the Muslims didn't allow us, the Christians, to use the bell, to ring the bell. And then we used to knock on the wood. And you can see the wood beneath the bell, and the, the fresh knock on the wood. Then, as we believe from that idea. Today, in that church, they're saving ancient traditions that when they are using the bells, they're still knocking on the wood. And now when we know it, let us see another thing from here. And this is a Greek Orthodox church that was closed for us. Uh, we couldn't go in. A Greek Orthodox church is reminding us, reminding us of there's a wall of icon, you can see the two lights there, and there's a wall of icon, they divide us from the holy. The holy side is there, and we are the disciples. And the keeper is the wall of icons. Now, usually you cannot see the holy part of the church, but because there is a gap here, this is the holy of the holy at the church of, uh, of the province of a Greek Orthodox church. And now we know another thing. This is a beautiful mosaic wall, but it's a new one from uh, almost 2000. Not 2000 years ago, the year 2000. I think the 90s. Then let's look at the right side. You can see the crucifixion area and you can see the skull beneath it. We talked about it. And then they will purify the, the dead body of, um, of, uh, of Jesus. You can see Mary the mother and you can see the face of Mary, how difficult it is. And you didn't see uh, uh, Joseph of Arimathea again. Not the, it's not the it's not father. I mean, it's not Joseph and Mary. It's a, it's a Jew from the Sanhedrin who gave Jesus his own tomb, a believer. Then they will purify his body, and you can see that he's naked. And then they will put a shroud on it. And guess what? It's a cave. We already saw the caves. We actually, saw two caves like that. They put put, put it in the cave, but you know what's happened on the third day? They actually resurrect. The stone that you see here is actually behind me. And we believe that this is the place that the naked body of Jesus touched. If you bought something, I want you to bless it because now it's going to be a relic and the candles as well. Another thing that I want you to bless if you are Christian, the note for the Western world. Put it there as well and take it, take it uh, with you. We're going to put it at the Western world stone between the Western stone. And even if you didn't buy a thing, I want you to bless yourself by touching it. Smell your hands later on. This is magic. I'm going to the other side and do it here.
No, no, no. Take it from the plastic. I mean, now we're going to bless it. If you do, if you are buying something for your friends, if it's a present, take a picture from above, print it, and that's going to be the greeting card. I want them to know that you blessed it there. It's January 1st, first day of 2018. Then Happy New Year. And as you can see, it's raining. It started with the rain. It started with the rain. This is the only entrance and exit of the church. Family, we are at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, closed next to the tomb of Jesus. We already know how the tomb of Jesus looks like. Remember the cave that we saw at, on top of Mount Scapus? Then in that matter, come closer, please. Now I'm, I'm, I'm feeling okay with that fence. Then in that matter, we already know how a Jew used to be buried. First of all, we know that after he died, they will try to bury him at the same day. Later on, we're going to see the anointing table. That's where they purify the body of Jesus. For me, it's not less important than the tomb because the naked body of Jesus touched it. And this is important. Then the site is totally new because the church had been destroyed this time by the Christians themselves in 1808. It was burned down and the roof fell and destroyed the, the structure that was here from the 12th century. Still not the original. Why it's not the original? Because if there is a place that no one... Uh, uh, there is a place that I can say that this is the Twin Towers of Christianity. It's that church. If someone didn't like the Christians, the best place to do that is to destroy it. Until the 4th century, no Christian could go in. It was a Roman temple. Then how do we know that this is the real site? This is one of the questions that you will ask me not about here, all over. Because of one thing. For the first 400 years, we couldn't build churches. But I believe that the first disciples, when they came to here, they actually stood outside the temple, the Roman temple, and said to the children, this is the place that he was crucified. This is the place that he was buried. And this is the place of the resurrection. The, um, the, then in that case, you're letting people to go in. See, I'm, 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 I'm in Israel, I know all the tricks. <laughs> then in that matter, in that matter, uh, when St. Anne came, 4th century, you know, the 4th century, she knew where to go. Now, what we're going to see in the tomb? There are two chapels there. The first chapel that you will see, which is right to your right side, is the chapel of the angels who took care that no one will steal the body of Christ. You will see there a table, and it's, um, the, the top of the table is, is a glass top. It's covered, as we believe, part of the rolling stones of the ancient cave that used to be here. The second, ah, and you will see the, the holy fire, where are you? The holy fire will be on top of the table. Later on, we will light it, uh, light the candles from the holy fire, but not from the inner one. The second place is the tomb itself. It's not a big place. It's only, let's say, three or four people can go there. You cannot take pictures in. And uh, the priest, the Greek Orthodox priest, will give you something like 20 seconds to be there. Then if it's okay by you, be with Jesus. And then print a picture from, uh, from Google. It's not a problem. I want you to, This is the only place that I want you to be. If you bought something, don't take it out of the plastic. Then just put it on the tomb and bless it. But later on... We we're going to bless it again. Um, the site itself is from 19, uh, sorry, 1809. And they build it quickly. And you know what's happened when you're building something quickly? And let's face it, uh, if you are building something at all, from time to time you must renovate it. It took them 200 years to agree to renovate it. 
um, before uh, a year ago, you could see metal, metal, iron metal things that actually have been there to try to uh, keep it alive. But uh, it's almost been destroyed by itself. Then they greeted it. And what you can see, what you see here is the tomb after the renovation, which uh, happened um, just before uh, Easter, last Easter. We have another six people to go in, and um, now we do the second video. Until you will be here, I'm going to take a, a video of the facade of the tomb. This is the facade of the tomb. You can see the holy fire there. See the light? That's the first room, the chapel of the angels. And behind it, oh now they cannot see it, but you see the woman are going out. It's the tomb itself. Cannot take a video of it, then in that case I'm, uh, I'm uh, staying outside. Is the tomb of Jesus? Then um, here you can see the second, turned out the second dome, the smallest one, and from the outside you can see the outer tomb. This is the Greek Orthodox Church. Yeah, from time to time it's open, then you can go in. I'm not going into the to talk about uh, what is a Greek Orthodox Church and what's the differences because that is not for that movie. But the most important thing is behind that chair, uh, table. It's a round thing. This is according to tradition, and yeah, now can see it better, the center of the world. Then in that matter, uh, if you go there, make a round tour around the center of the world. Mark Twain was here too, and when he wrote his book in the 19th century, he actually mentioned that the center of the world was more to there, but because the world is shrinking, and actually moves to here. Then the Greek Orthodox Church, let's continue to make a round tour around the church itself and that's going to be for next see so that's where, where the tomb is next part we are at the Cyrannic church inside the church of the Holy Sepulchre let's talk about the name of the, that church the church of the Holy Tomb I don't like it I'm going back to the Provoslav and to the Greek Orthodox. They call the church the Resurrection Church. Because the story is not about the tomb of Jesus. The story is about the resurrection of Jesus. Then why we entered here? First of all, because I promised you to see another tomb. Secondly, because it's a very important place. That area used to be owned by the Syrianic Church. Church of Syria, um, Lebanon. And they don't have a lot of um, power here. Um, when the, um, that place was set on fire in 1808 and all the church been burned down, uh, when they came back to here, the Armenian told them it's not yours anymore. Until they figure out who owns the place, it will be like that. No one will maintain it. Remember, this is the most important holy site for most of the Christians. There, and now you can understand why it was so smart, so smart of us to look at the tomb there, the Mount, uh, Mount, uh, Mount of uh, Olives, uh, Mount Kapos, is another tomb cemetery. The same tomb that you saw with the niches, with the table, and, uh, and, and here you can see every part of the cave. Then why it's not the tomb of Jesus? Why everyone worship a place that doesn't look like a tomb? And why we are worship a place that... Uh, and why am I not washing that place? Because this is written from the time of Jesus. Because according to tradition, remember, that was the site. But, if that was the garden of Joseph of Arimathea, and he gave Jesus his own tomb, and that's why we can actually say that a tomb can be inside the city because it's a private garden. You can do whatever you want with his garden. Then in that matter, he gave his Jesus his tomb that no one used. I'm almost sure 
that the church, it's, I mean, sorry, Joseph of Aramitia built himself another family tomb near Jesus. Then according to tradition, this is Joseph of Aramitia tomb. If you want to see it, let's wait until the that room will go, because we don't have time problem. And we will see it. Nice story, isn't it? Then it shows you that death used to be a cemetery, and that is so important for me to tell you. But I hope that one day they will renovate it, that place because it doesn't look well. They did it two years ago. The floor is new. For that, it was sandy area. Then, if you want to stand in the line, feel free. Use your uh, flashlight if you want to see. And I will wait for you just outside. Okay? We are at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. We are now walking now to the lowest place of the church. There are two chapels there. One belongs to the Armenian. The other one belongs to the Catholic. Um, on the way down, I want you to see that on the wall there are so many graffiti of crosses. Let's face it, graffiti is a pollution. But graffiti from 14th century, it's history. Then let's go down and see it on the way. Be careful when you're walking down. All right, let's do that. Beautiful it is. Again, that area was is belonged to. I mean, it belonged to the Armenian, and they actually renovated it. Um, they finished to renovate it. Let's say two months ago. Then it's looked totally new, but it's quite old. Let's go to that area. Let's start with a place that we cannot go into it. Uh, it's so rare that it will be open, and usually they're uh, letting only Armenians to go there if they're paying money. The door will lead you to the second and even the first century, which is beautiful. Remember, we cannot see anything from that time. And one of the places, there is kind of a boat, someone painted a boat, and he said, we came to visit you alone. It might be the most ancient um, evidence for the existence of that church, second century. Remember, it was a Roman place. You couldn't do that. And this is amazing, and what can I say? It's not open. Another thing before we would talk about that beautiful painting is look at that, that memorial stone. It's called Hachkar. Yeah, and you can see the cross. Is that 12? Is it 12? It is. It is? All right, all right, all right, all right. Then, before we talk about the Hajkar, wow, let me tell you that he was crucified at 12 o'clock. We are at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre at the time that Jesus was crucified. I don't know about you, but for me, and I'm a Jew. I, ooh, I can feel my skin. Then while I'm talking, I want you to understand that he died now. Then this is a memorial stone. You can find it in so many Armenian places. Usually it's a stone from Armenia. I'm not sure that that one is from Armenia. And you can see that it actually stands on the word. That. Now let's talk about them and you will understand why the Armenians are more unique than the rest. The one who looks like Jesus in the water is not Jesus. This is the king of the Armenian. You don't believe me? Look at the other side. You can see that the servants are holding his clothes. He was so sick. And they tried everything without any solution. And then his daughter told him, listen, in the prison there's a man that I know that is holy. And he's, and he's in jail because he's a Christian. Remember, it's not a legal religion. But I know that he can cure you. Then the man that looks like a bishop now, 
he is the one, he is the prisoner that cured uh, the king. And you can see he, you can see now that the king has been baptized all together with the rest of the Armenian uh, nation. Then they were um, transferred into Christianity. They became Christians at least 30 years before Constantine did it to the rest of the Armenians. And in that case, they've been here 30 years before Constantine, mother, St. Helen. Another thing, they used to sit, they used to live in that area, but because their Christianity is a little bit different than Constantine's Christianity, they kicked them out of that area. Then they found themselves another place to be, and now they can say that they have their own quarter. And in that church, you will find a lot of Armenian places, although Armenia is a small place. Another important story that happened to Arme in Armenia in 1915 is about that mosaic floor. You can see here nine cities that have been destroyed in 1915 by the Ottomans, future Turks. This is the first genocide, not the, not the Jewish one. No one knows about it. Do you know about it? Oh, 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 good, good, because usually no one talks about it. The government are not talking about it because of the political power of Turkey, and Armenia has got no political power. Then in that case, what I want you to remember, what I want you to do is to go into the internet and look for the Armenian genocide and read about it. Another important place that the Armenians were so proud of it is the Ark of Ararat, Noah. It used to be at Armenia, now it's part of Turkey. Then in that case, beautiful place to see. And it's not the lowest place. We are now going to the lowest place. And that's going to be the Catholic uh, part, and that's going to be another video. We are at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, heading to the lowest place. But on the way, I forgot to mention one thing. The real cross that used to be here was stolen around the 6th century. What you can see here is the Armenians bringing it back from the prison. And they are very proud of it. What's happened to the cross today? We don't know. All right, let's start with one of the problems, water. There's no water in Jerusalem. The only spring of Jerusalem is at City of David. Remember, we saw where City of David is located? Then no water. Then one of the questions is how can they actually build their houses? Then in a way, we are in a quarry. Look at that. You see that? According to what the, uh, the scholars believe, the first our own or the second temple was built from that quarry. Now, if there's a quarry here, then, and there's no water in Jerusalem, then usually they used to put plaster on it, and let's look at the plaster right there, for example. And they turn it into a water system. Just to show you that it used to be a water system, look above you, see the bucket holes. Right, and every quarry became, almost every quarry became a water system, mainly because there's no water here. When St. Helen came to here, and you can see St. Helen right there, the Jews here, well not the Jews were here, show her where are the three crosses, because she wanted the evidence for that place. She wanted to see the crosses. Then they took her to that place, And what you found here is three crosses. Now, which one of them is Jesus' cross? She took a sick Jewish lady, and the first cross touched her shoulder, nothing happened. Second cross touched her shoulder, nothing happened. I think you know what will happen in the third cross. When that cross touched her, she was cured. And in that case, 
That is the chapel of the finding of the process. Okay. So in the lowest place in the place. And look at the fresco of, of Jesus. And the fresco, if you don't know, it's from the fourth or later. Which is beautiful. And now when we know it, let's a guide. And we will continue up. And we will continue the story of the church. We are at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, very close to the Golgotha, to the crucifixion place. Actually, it's above us. But why I stopped here? Because you can see part of the bedrock of the Golgotha. We have to climb that hill to see where he was crucified. The word Golgotha is, was mentioned only in the Bible. No one, uh, I mean, there's no other source that actually told us about it. Why Golgotha? It's a skull, Calvary. Um, we don't know. The first option is because, you know, it's, if it's a crucifixion area, then it's so easy to find some uh, skulls. People are being crucified there. Another option, which I like it better, this is the tomb of Adam. And if you remember that at three o'clock, when he died, the earth started to shake and it was darkness all over and so many people resurrect. According to tradition, one of them was Adam. Then let's go now to see Adam Chapel, the tomb of Adam. But before that, I'm afraid of the priest there. What about Eve? Then I believe that a man and a woman are equal. I believe that Eve and Adam committed the same sin. Then I'm adding the tomb of Eve there too, but it's only me. Don't tell it to anyone. <laughs> then let's go to see it. All right. You can see another part of the Golgotha through that window. Here, there, you can see something that you can see on the behind you. This is the exit for, of the uh, Catholic ch uh, Church, which was closed. I wanted to go in, but um, as you can see, only Greek Orthodox let them in. Uh, and uh, although we do have one, still it's not easy to go in. Then you can see creek there, a result of the earthquake that was here. Remember, everything was shaking here. Then, according to tradition, this is the tomb of Adam. And above us, above us, is the crucifixion site. We are going to see it, and now that group is living, and my family, you can go in. In that door, there's a beautiful Greek Orthodox chapel, which usually is closed. And they believe, I mean, why not to believe them? A small part of the cross is there. But to go in, it's almost impossible. <laughs> then this is the tomb of Adam, and you know what I'm thinking about it? Well, I'm adding Eve into it as well, but it's only me. And from here, we will climb up to the Golgotha to see where he was crucified. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the first day of 2018, it's so difficult for me to say, January 1st. And look at those pillars. You can see that it's different. And it looks like a mass. There's so many without any order. The church in that, that church being destroyed so many times, and you can see uh, 6th century uh, pillars, 12th century pillars, it's a problem here. We talked only about the, we talked about the restrooms, we already know the story, but even that was difficult for us to do. And for like at least seven years, the Greek Orthodox, the Pervislav, uh, renovating the prison of Jesus. Now, what do you mean prison of Jesus? He walked with the cross on and then they crucified him. Oh, no, no, no. You have to go back to Brian. Life of Brian, did you see it, Monty Biden? Then, when he reached, to the, he reached to the place of the crucifixion, he had to wait. I mean, he wasn't the only one who was crucified. Remember, there were another two, but I'm sure that in that area of the Golgotha, there were more than that. Then, according to Christians, mainly Greek Orthodox, he was right there in that, in that room, and um, waiting 
for the end of it. Uh, I don't know why it's taken them like me or used to do that, but this is the prison of Jesus. Let's continue. There's nothing to see. It's still doing a video of it now. Uh, let's continue to the lowest place in the church.